thrilled to be able to show you GarageBand running on an iPad. This is really cool. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up our new iPad 2 here, and I'll launch GarageBand. And the first thing you see is an instrument browser. So these are all the touch instruments Steve just mentioned. And you can just swipe to tap through them, and it's incredible. They turn the iPad itself into a musical instrument that you can play wherever you go. And I'll go ahead and bring up a, a keyboard to, to start showing this off. And you can see this beautiful grand piano comes up and it fills the display. And the keyboard's not just a grand piano. I can tap on that icon right in the middle there, and you can see all the sounds that are built in. There are organs, electric piano, clavinet. Look at this, a whole bunch of great synthesizers that are really, really fun to play. But let's stick with that piano for now. And the GarageBand piano shares a lot of the qualities of a real grand piano. Of course, we see a bunch of black and white keys, and we can just tap right on the iPad's display to play them. Right, but a real piano also has a sustain pedal. And without a sustain pedal, when you tap on a note or play a note and then let go, it stops sounding. So we have this button here that we can tap and hold whenever we need sustain, or we can even slide and lock that into position. And now, sustain is just on and ringing all the time, which is cool. Now, another important quality of a real piano is that you can play a piano with dynamics. So what does that mean? It means that a note sounds different when you tap it soft or when you strike it really hard. And the GarageBand keyboard does that too. So look at this. I'll go ahead and play a passage fairly soft. Right, or I can strike it hard. Right, and you can hear the difference. So how do we do that? Well, iPad has an accelerometer built in, and we use that to measure the force that my finger strikes the display. So GarageBand knows if I tap something really soft or really hard. And we use that throughout the app, and that lets, lets us create these instruments that are incredibly expressive and, and fun to play. Now, we're only seeing some of the keys available to us because this is just a window into a much larger, full-range piano. And we can move up and down the registers of that piano with these octave switches on the left side of the screen. So if I tap it down a couple times to minus two, there's how we play a lower note. And I can show this off by playing the same three notes and we'll tap up through the octaves. Right, so no problem accessing all the notes on this piano. Now, as I mentioned before, it's not just a piano, some great sounds here, and let's bring up the classic rock organ. First thing you'll see is that the look and the personality and the controls completely change to match a real B3 organ. And I can just go ahead and play that. Right, and then you would expect the controls that you would have on a real organ. Things like these draw bars that affect the tone. So as I play a chord, I can move these. And see that rotating speaker at the top? I can even speed up the speaker. All right, just incredibly realistic. And we built all those controls into the instruments because they're important. So we'll check out one more sound here on the keyboard and we'll go to our synthesizers. And let's bring up uh, 50 Sci-Fi. Now this will show something that you can do on the GarageBand virtual keyboard that you can't even play on a real physical keyboard. So we're really taking advantage of the unique things you can do with software here. Now this one is set up in a way that when I tap a key and I slide my finger up and down the rest of the keys, it's gonna glide between the notes. It won't play the individual notes. And we've added a blue dot that's gonna follow my finger so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I can tap a note and slide the note up. All right, you play stuff like that. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So as I slide my finger up that key, you probably notice that we can introduce additional expression like vibrato, and this will explain why this synth is called 50 Sci-Fi. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> so super fun, uh, really realistic, and a lot of things we can, we can do in software that you can't do in the real world. And if I go back to the touch instrument browser, just to remind you, all that is just one instrument. That was the keyboard. And we have all these touch instruments built in. We won't have time to show them all, but let's take a look at a couple more. How about some drums? So GarageBand will put you behind the seat of a virtual drum kit and you can just bash away on your iPad. Right, and just like the keyboards, it knows if I tap soft or hard. 
right? And there's different parts of the drum plays different sounds, which is cool. And then I can even tap the edge of the ride cymbal to show that the position, as I move closer to the bell, you get a different sound and I'll alternate between the two. Right, or the left and right side of the hi-hat to play open and close patterns. So really, really fun, and if you want, you can just run your finger in a circle and make a lot of noise. <laughs> Another great feature of these drums is that your kids can play them with, headfo <laughs> with headphones on. <laughs> so guitar amp. This is great, guitarists are gonna love this. You can plug right into your iPad and play through classic amps and stomp box effects. They look and sound just like the originals. But you know, there are a lot more people out there who don't play guitar or don't play any instrument at all. And we really wanted GarageBand for iPad to be fun for everyone. So we designed a special kind of touch instrument that we call smart instruments. Now these smart instruments are designed for you to be able to have fun, be musical, even if you've never played a note in your life. And we have smart guitars, smart keyboards, smart bass, smart drums. But let's bring up the smart guitar and show you what it does. So here you can see an acoustic guitar, but one that everybody can play. We have some chords along the middle there, and we've pre-picked all those chords, and we know that they work together, so we do that for you. You don't need to know anything about music. You just take your finger, pick a chord, and then just strum your iPad. They all sound good together. All right, campfires will never be the same. <laughs> and we can go and even play individual, we can tap individual notes and do finger picking. All right, so super fun. And here's a little trick I like to show is that you can lay your hand across all the strings and that dampens the guitar strings. So just the realism and expression in these instruments are so much fun, yet incredibly easy to play. Now, if we want it to be even a little bit easier and have GarageBand do the finger picking or the strumming for me, a lot of these smart instruments have this autoplay dial. And I can just go ahead and dial up a pattern. The strings fade away. Now I have these big bars, so the only decision I make is which chord do I want to play. And look what happens with one touch of a finger when I tap on one of these chords. Just choose any chord. Isn't that cool? I just tap again. And it's that simple to play parts. So in, in a lot of ways, these smart instruments, they're kind of like musical training wheels. They make it so you really can't play a bad note. Now, the next thing is recording. Let's say we, we have an idea and we want to capture it so we can hear it later. Recording in GarageBand for iPad is incredibly simple. You can see right at the top of the screen, that bright red button, that's in every touch instrument. So all we have to do is tap on it. We'll get a count in. I'll just play the part again. Right, you can see that now in the music timeline up here, we can see the area in green that shows me where my recording has gone. And I can go ahead and play it back. It sounds just like I played it. So you can tell, really easy to do a recording. But you know, once you've laid down one recording, that's actually the first step to writing a song. And to write a song, you need more than one track because you're gonna be combining different instruments together. And that's where the tracks view comes in. So right above the ruler, we have this little tracks button. And when I tap on it, the instrument rotates out of the way and that brings up the canvas. And this is where I work on my song and the arrangement. So the controls at the top never change. Those are exactly the same. I don't have to relearn anything. I can just rewind, show you that that part is still there. The difference is that I see this region. And I can just tap on that region. I can do things like trim it, come up with the exact length I want. And this is incredible because I'm touching right on the building blocks of my song and building the song as I go along. So GarageBand for iPad supports up to eight tracks. And let's put that into perspective for a second. Back when the Beatles recorded Sgt. Pepper, the most advanced technology of the day was a four-track tape recorder. And it weighed 300 pounds and was the size of a washing machine. So now today, people are gonna have super fun with up to eight tracks on an iPad that's just this light and thin. It's really, really just incredible. Let's go up and bring up a demo song. I'll tap on my songs. And we want to show you what this looks like when you have a bunch of tracks in place and the screen is kind of filled in. And this one uses a whole bunch of our touch instruments. We've got drums and bass and keyboards, a couple guitar amps. And uh, you know, I can swipe back and forth to just scroll through my song. If I want to see the entire song at a glance, I just pinch 
to zoom out, there it is. If I want to see any details, I just pinch to zoom in and get you know, as close as I want. Or I can, of course, go ahead and rewind and hit play. And here's something really cool. I can swipe over the track icons and look what happens. I get a mixing board. So now I can go in and fine tune the levels of my track, get everything just right. I can solo a track. There's one of our smart guitars strumming along with the track, and it's a little quiet, so let's bring up the volume so you can hear it. The smart guitar, back it off. Bring the rest of the instruments back. Really cool. Okay, so when you make any changes like that, if I ever go back and I tap on my songs, it's gonna auto-save for me, make sure that all the changes are, are saved. And now I have a couple options to share that song with my friends. I can tap on export, and it's gonna render an AAC file of the song to make it sound great and be really easy to share. I can email it right from within GarageBand, just type a little note and tell my friends to check out my new mix, or I can send it to my iTunes library. So the next time I connect my iPad to my Mac or my PC, I can move it right over and add it to my iTunes library. So that's just a quick look at GarageBand for iPad. It turns your iPad into a complete recording studio and a collection of these incredible touch instruments. And we just can't wait to hear all the creative things that people are going to do once they get this in their hands. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I'm blown away with this stuff, you know? Playing your own instruments or using the smart instruments, anyone can make music now in something that's this thick and weighs 1.3 pounds. It's unbelievable. So, GarageBand for iPad. Great set of features. Again, this is no toy. This is something that you can really use for real work. This is something that I cannot tell you how many hours teenagers are going to spend making music with this and teaching themselves about music with this. GarageBand for iPad, $4.99. It will be on the App Store on March 11th.